Order, order. All employers must pay superannuation contributions on the employee's behalf and ensure every working Australian saves for their retirement. Back in the 1980s, superannuation was a privilege enjoyed by the public servants and high-income white-collar workers. Paul Keating's government changed all that in 1992. From $148 billion in 1992 before SG contributions to super became mandatory, the value of superannuation assets have gone up to $3.4 trillion by 2022. Seems like we have built a nice nest egg for ourselves, right? Well, there have been many controversies along the way and complications that may impact everyone in the future. It was legislated that from 1992, the SG contributions increased incrementally from 3% to 9% by July 2002. In the 1995 to 96 budget, the Keating government proposed a further increase to 15% through a both an additional employee and employer contribution. However, John Howard was elected in 1996 reviewed the proposal and later decided to drop it. For a long time, SG contributions remained stagnated at 9% since 2002. Throughout the years, the Labour government have tried to increase SG contributions, but the Liberals have been fighting against it. There is always one that argues increasing SG will stagnate wage growth. Wages should be growing at the level of inflation plus productivity. Yet, wages have barely gone over inflation plus productivity for over a decade. Workers are not getting rewarded for their efforts. So would you rather have SG contributions increase or continue receiving nothing? In 1992, the average Australian lifespan was 74.5 for men and 80.4 for women. This has now changed to 81.2 for men and 85.3 for women in 2020. The Australian population in 1992 was 17.5 million and grew to 25.7 in 2021. The most important metric we should look at is the work to retiring ratio. In the 1980s, it was 7 to 1 and in 2021, it was 4 to 1. It is projected to decrease further in 2040 by 3 to 1. Given this information, do you think the age pension will be available in the distant future? People won't save if you let people have the choice. However, forcing people to invest their money in a system they don't fully understand poses problems as well. The Royal Commission started in late 2017, investigated the misconduct of the financial services industry. Recommendations were made to help change an industry dedicated to selling financial products to a profession concerned with the provision of financial advice. However, this also resulted in increased compliance measures and advice fees. The average cost of seeing a financial advisor now is around $3,500 per year. The cookie cutter education system is also failing to teach general financial literacy and how superannuation is supposed to help save for our retirements. Superannuation is not a flashy subject, but we hope you stick around to learn more about super. Most employees are entitled to SG contributions from their employer. The employer puts aside money in the form of super contributions over the employee's working life. The idea is for these contributions to be invested, have the earnings compound over time, and build an nest egg for the employee can use during retirement. The original intent for superannuation was to be used in conjunction with the age pension so that you can live a comfortable retirement. The age pension by itself can only support a basic lifestyle. Having access to additional funds from super would improve living standards while giving you more flexibility. Unfortunately, the reality is that the tide may shift one day where we as a country cannot afford to fund the age pension. This is why it is so important that we start saving for our retirement ourselves. There are five main types of super funds. Industry funds are non-for-profit funds originally started by trade unions and employer associations. Retail funds are run by big banks or investment companies. Self-managed super funds are funds that people manage themselves. It takes a lot of time, commitment, and a large amount of money to be worth the effort. Corporate funds are set up and managed by big companies. Public sector funds are built for government workers. Public offer funds can be joined by anyone in the public. While non-public funds is limited to employees of an employer, or group of employers. Your superannuation is a platform that offers a number of features and investment options. 
Your superannuation fund by itself does not earn you money. The investment options you choose within the platform help grow your super balance. You can invest in a wide range of investments within the superannuation environment. Only the superannuation fund can limit you on the kind of investments you can select. Self-managed super funds will give you the most flexibility, but a lot of time and commitment will need to be put into it. In addition, the setup costs and running costs of a self-managed super fund only become competitive based on a higher balance. This can be anywhere from $250,000 to $500,000, depending on your investment goals and needs. Retail funds offer more investment options compared to other types of super funds besides self-managed super funds. Industry super funds offer less investment options. Generally, you can make use of them if you do not have complex investment needs or goals. Industry super versus retail funds. Retail funds have a responsibility to shareholders, while industry funds don't pay profits to shareholders. Retail funds will generally have more investment options to choose from. Most retail funds will have access to both active managed funds and index funds. They may also offer access to direct shares, ETFs, and term deposits. Industry super funds have less investment options to choose from. They generally have their investment options more weighted towards index funds and passive investing. Some premixed or diversified investment options within industry funds do allocate a portion of the strategy to active management, where they think they can outperform the market and allocate the rest of the strategy to index funds and passive investing. Active managed funds cost more than their index counterparts, as active managed funds hire people with expertise and qualifications to try and outperform the market. While index funds try to copy the markets by investing all the companies that make up that particular market. Index funds don't need to hire active fund managers, hence why they are less expensive. Most active funds fail to outperform the market though. So is it worth paying extra for active management? Maybe if you can find the one that actually beats the market consistently, or if it invests within a particular niche you are currently interested in and there are no index counterparts. Active managed funds may not be for you if you cannot find the needle in the haystack or want to set and forget approach to investing. This is just an overview of investment options within Super. Leave a comment below if you want me to make a more detailed video about this. For many, it's very hard to think about the long-term picture and how the retirement should look like. Priorities like paying off the mortgage, paying off bills, paying off credit card debt, living the best life, taking care of family, and investing into business ventures all come into mind. This is why the government has given tax incentives within the superannuation environment to encourage Australians to save more within their super. Investment earnings generated within super are taxed at a maximum rate of 15%. When you reach retirement age and your super account is transferred to an account-based pension, investment earnings within the account-based pension are not taxed. You heard it right, no tax on investment earnings. There are rules around starting, stopping, and a limit on how much you can transfer over from super to an account-based pension. Ways to put your own money into super. Concessional contributions reduce the overall tax paid by taking away a portion of the employee's pre-tax income and putting this into their super instead. While they're paying less tax overall when their marginal tax rate is higher than 15%, it will reduce their take home pay as a portion of the income has gone into super for retirement. The link is in the description down below if you want to find more about salary sacrifice contributions, which is a concessional contribution. Non-concessional contributions is when you put your after-tax money into super. Both of these contributions have their limits on how much you can contribute into super for every financial year. Superannuation is meant to be used for your retirement. Unfortunately, there are people that pass away before this and your superannuation balance does not automatically fall under your estate or will. Super funds will have a way to nominate people you want to receive your funds in the event where you pass away. You must be mindful that there may be tax consequences if you pass your super funds to a financially non-dependent person. Fee structure of a superannuation fund. Admin fees is a flat fee that covers the general cost of managing the super account. 
Advisor fee is a fee charged from a financial advisor if you have one. Investment fees are the cost of managing your investments. Performance fees is where an investment option charges additional fees if they reach certain targets. Only a few investment options in the market do this. Buy and sell costs occur when you make contributions, withdrawals, or switches to your investment options. This is sort of like when you buy and sell currency. Generally, superannuation is designed not to be accessed until you reach a certain age and retire. However, in practice, there are multiple ways you can be eligible to legally access your super fund in full or partially, but there are a number of criteria you will need to satisfy. This is known as conditions of release. Insurance is a way to give you and your loved ones some protection in the event of misfortune. Life insurance pays you a lump sum or income stream to your beneficiaries when you die or if you have a terminal illness. TBD insurance, which stands for Total and Permanent Disability Insurance, pays your benefit if you become seriously disabled and are unlikely to work again. Income protection pays you a regular income for a specified period if you can't work due to temporary disability or illness. Be aware that policies from different insurance providers have different features and benefits. When it comes to insurance, cheaper does not always mean it is better if it leads to a less comprehensive definition and it will give you a less chance for claimable events. In the event of a successful claim, the benefit amount will be paid to the super fund and not yourself directly in the beginning. You would need to apply for conditions of release which may or may not result in receiving the insurance payout outside the superannuation fund for you to access directly. You can also hold insurance directly under your name where you can use your personal savings instead of your retirement savings. You must remember that insurance premiums can deplete your retirement funds and will affect your final balance once you retire. Like and subscribe to support the channel. Leave a comment below if you'd like to suggest a video topic I should cover.